Hello, my dear student. Welcome to another edition of your mathematics lesson. Today, we are going to take another fresh and interesting new topic that is algebraic fraction. And what you are going to learn first in this main topic is how to simplify algebraic fraction. So let's begin. After completing the very lesson today, my dear student, will be able to define what is an algebraic fraction, and you also be able to simplify simple algebraic fraction. This is what I hope you be able to do after completing the very lesson today. As usual in your favorite segment of the lesson, mass is fun, my dear student. Today I'm happy to give you another interesting and another special number. This number is 69. 69 is so amazing, so special, so unique. I'll tell you what is special about this very number 69 after completing my lesson today. So don't go away. My dear student, to begin the lesson, let me first define what is algebraic fraction. Algebraic fraction is a fracture of polynomials with denominator not equals to zero. That is, if you have a fraction in which either the denominator or the denominator or both contains a polynomial function, meaning a function, so expression in terms of letters, but the denominator of that very fraction is not equals to zero. So that type of fraction is called algebraic fraction. Let's just have our examples of algebraic fractions. Example of algebraic fractions, you have x squared plus 7 all over x minus 4. You can see here, both the numerator and your denominator contains a polynomial function, so it is algebraic fraction. Number 2 is 2 over y plus 3. You can see it is denominator that contains letter here. So still this is another algebraic fraction. Number three, you have two x square minus three x minus seventeen all over x square minus four. So you can see letters there. That is expression containing the letters in both the numerator and the denominator. So it is an algebraic fraction. These are just the typical examples of algebraic fractions. So let me just to move and learn how to simplify algebraic fractions. So to do this simplification of algebraic fraction, there are guidelines, there are rules, there are step-by-step -step process that you have to follow. So number one, it says factorize both the numerator and the denominator completely. That is, if your algebraic fractions, either the numerator or your denominator of that algebraic fraction is factorizable, or both of them are factorizable, so do the factorization and make sure you factorize it completely. When you do that, you now move to step number two. Step number two says divide the numerator and the denominator by the common factor. So after factoring in step number one, possibly you have, uh, you have some common factors between the numerator and your denominator. So it is that common factor that you have to divide. But if there is no common factor, then you have to leave it like that. So starting with our example, x says example number one, we have to simplify x raised to the power of 3 plus x squared all over x plus 1. This is a typical example of algebraic fraction that we like it to simplify. Simplify means writing this very fraction in a much, much simpler form. So solution to this very problem, copying the given algebraic fraction, that is x2 raised to the power of 3 plus the x squared all over x plus 1. What rule number 1 says, remember, says you have to factorize it completely. So you now check uh, either numerator or denominator or both. If any of them or both of them are factorizable, you have to factorize each. So looking at my numerator, I can divide this x raised to the power of 3 by x squared. I divide this x squared by x squared, which means my numerator is factorizable. But look at my denominator is not factorizable, nothing common between these two terms. So let me just uh, copy my denominator, but my numerator, I have to write the factorization of this. So what I said, the x squared can divide each of these two, two terms. So let me have my x squared outside of the bracket. Then the result of doing this the division by x squared is what I'm going to write uh, inside this very bracket. So when x to cubed is divided by x squared, the result will give me just x. And 1 plus x squared is divided by x squared, the result is now going to be plus 1. So I'm going to have x plus 1 in the bracket. 
So I move to step number two. Step number two says you now divide both the numerator and the denominator by the common factor. I can see here x plus 1 as a factor in this numerator. And I have another x plus 1. So this is a common factor so they can cancel each other. Meaning I can divide by this common factor. So after this division you can see that x plus 1 canceling x plus 1. But remember, when we cancel, we are just doing the division. We are seeing x plus 1 divided by x plus 1. The result will be 1. 1 times x square is x square. Similarly, this x plus 1 divided by another x plus 1, the result will now be 1. So I'm going to have 1 here as my denominator, which we don't usually write. So the end result is now going to be x square. If you like x square over 1, which is still x square. So this is the simplified form of this very algebraic fraction. Let's just move and take another example. Example number 2x to simplify minus 2x minus 4 over minus 6x minus 4. Solution to this very problem, copying the given fraction. And I will now look at my numerator and my denominator. Step number 1 says each one that is factorizable, you have to factorize it. So look at this two. Both of them are factorizable because uh, my numerator, the terms that there can be divided by minus 2. Similarly, my denominator, here also the two terms can be divided by minus 2. So let me do that. So I'm going to have minus 2 outside of the bracket. I'm starting with the numerator. So when this minus 2x is divided by minus 2, the result will now be x. When minus 4 is divided by minus 2, the result is now going to be plus 2. So I'm going to have uh, x plus 2 in the bracket. Now, now move to the denominator. I said that these two terms in the denominator can each be divided by minus 2. So minus 2 outside the bracket. So dividing minus 6x by minus 2 gives me 3x. And dividing minus 4 by minus 2 gives me positive 2. So I'm going to have 3x plus 2. So I move to step number two. Step number two says if there is a common factor between numerator and denominator, so you divide that to common factor. I can see here minus two at the numerator level. There is another minus two there. They are common. So I can divide this numerator by this denominator. I mean this common factor. So canceling minus two by minus two, you now have uh, at numerator level x plus two. While the denominator label what remains is 3x plus 2. And this is the simplified form of this very fraction also. Let's just move and take another example. Example number 3 says simplify x square plus 6x plus 5 all over x square minus 25. Solution to this very problem, copying the given algebraic fraction. My numerator is a quadratic, is a quadratic expression. Similarly, denominator is another quadratic expression. So I can now factorize the this by factorization method. Remember, factoring this in the SS1. So factorization of this, if done correctly, you now have uh, x plus 5 uh, times another bracket containing x plus 1. While the denominator, look at the denominator, this 25 can be written as 5 raised to the power of 2. And remember your SS1 factorization using difference of two squares. This now becomes x square minus 5 square. And the factor in using difference of two squares is a matter of opening two brackets. Uh, one of the brackets each uh, you now contain x, x first. Then the second term in each bracket, the first one will now be one contain minus 5 and the other one contain plus 5. So I'm going to have x plus 5. Uh, times another bracket containing x minus 5. This is factorization using difference of two squares, which you learn in your SS1. So I continue step number two. Step number two says is to check out whether there are common factors between numerator and denominator. I can see x plus 5, x plus 5 is common. So they can cancel out. So there, if I cancel them out, what remains uh, at the numerator level will now be x plus 1, while at the denominator will now be x minus 5. And this is the simplified uh, form of this very fraction. Let's just move and take another example. Example number 4, it says you have to simplify x square 
minus y square all over x minus y in bracket and the bracket raised to the power of 2. Solution to this very problem, copying the given tax, that is the algebraic fraction x square minus y square over x minus y in the bracket and the bracket raised to the power of 2. So look at both the numerator and the denominator. The, nomin the numerator is now factorizable because I can apply difference of two squares here. But uh, the denominator here is just a matter of attempting to expand because it's the bracket raised to the power of two, which means that bracket times itself. Let me factorize the numerator. That is applying difference of two squares. So this will now be x at the beginning of each bracket. Then the second term in the bracket will now be one of them will now contain plus y and the other one will now contain minus y. So let me do that. So I'm going to have x minus y times another bracket containing x plus y. This is the factorization of the numerator using difference of two squares. But my denominator here is just that the bracket times itself. So let me just do that. So I'm going to have x minus y times another x minus y, both of them in bracket. So I move to step number two says uh, if there are common factors between your numerator and the denominator, you cancel them out. I can see x minus y, look at it, and another x minus y, look at it, so they can cancel each other. So after canceling, you now have uh, x plus y, this very x plus y, the numerator level, over x minus y, this remaining x minus y. So this is the simplified form of this. Let's just take, take one more example. Example number five, it says simplify three minus x all over x square minus nine. This is what we asked to, to simplify, meaning write it in a much, much simpler form. Solution to this very problem, copying the given fraction that is three minus x all over x square minus nine. So what I'll now do, I'll now check uh, my numerator is not factorizable. But look at the denominator, x squared minus 9. This 9 can be written as 3 raised to the power of 2. So this will now become x squared minus 3 squared, which can I apply my difference of 2 squares. So let me just copy in that numerator, 3 minus x. But I am now factorizing this, my denominator. And this will now contains x plus 3 times x minus 3. This is the factorization of this. So I'll continue. So step number 2 says you now check out whether there are common factors. I can see in the numerator I have 3 minus x. But in the denominator this bracket is x plus 3. While the other bracket is x minus 3. It is only this x minus 3 that somehow closely resemble 3 minus x. What makes them the different is, is, is the sign. Here it is this 3 that is negative, but in this place it is 3 that is positive, while x is negative, but here x is positive here, so which means I can do some little manipulation so that I will now revert, revert this 3 minus x into x minus 3 so that in the end I'll cancel because uh, the 2 is just the this sign. The sign of 3 here is positive while it is negative here. While the sign of x here is negative while it is positive here. Which means if I can do that manipulation to revert those signs from positive to negative and from negative to positive, I'll be able to change this into this. But remember, whatever you do in mathematics, you have to do it so that uh, what you are doing is valid, meaning you are not changing that expression completely. So multiplying this by 1, we are not changing that thing. That is anything times 1, it is still that thing. So what I'm doing now is multiplying this numerator by 1. But that 1 can be obtained as a result of multiplication of uh, minus 1 by minus 1. Remember, minus 1 times minus 1, it gives you 1 positive, And that 1 positive times this bracket is still that same bracket. But what I'm going to do, I will now take this minus 1 into the bracket. When you multiply this bracket by negative 1, you are now reversing all the sign. Minus will now change it to plus, and plus will now change it to minus. But the other minus 1 will now remain outside. So this is what I'm basically doing.
you can do this always this manipulation if you have uh, if you have terms like that so let me do that so multiplying this minus 1 into the bracket it will now reverse this 3 to minus and reverse this x to plus let me do that so i'm going to have minus 3 plus x that is minus 1 times 3 to give you minus 3 and minus 1 times uh, minus x it gives you positive x and this minus 1 the one first remain outside i'll just copy it so if i can now rewrite this bracket that is minus 3 plus x if i can rewrite it that is x come first then minus 30 second i'm now going to have x minus 3 in the bracket and i just copied that minus 1 you can now see that you have uh, exactly common factor between the numerator and uh, the denominator, which can cancel out. That is x minus 3 and this x minus 3 cancel. So what remains, you now have minus 1 at the numerator level, while you have this x plus the 3 that remains at the denominator. And this is the factorization of this. With this, my dear student, I hope you'll be able to simplify simple algebraic fractions. This is where I come to the end of this very lesson. Let me just move to the last segment, Mercy fun and explain what is amazing, what is special, and what is unique about this number 69. 69 is the only number, is the only number that can be expressed as product uh, and the sum of it is a digit that is if you now find the products of the digit that is six and nine and you also find the sum of the digit six and nine if you add the two results uh, it to give you your 69 back and it is the only number that this thing could happen let's just find out and see 69 is the same thing as you can see here if i multiply six by nine that is the products of the digits there in six and nine and i also add those digits there six and nine if i add the two results uh, what i'm expected to get is my 69 back let me just find out six multiplied by nine gives you 54 and the six plus nine gives you 15. if you add 54 and 15 what i'm getting is now you are 69 back so this is really amazing and it is the only number that this thing could happen Thank you for your attention. We see more of these interesting things in mathematics in our subsequent lessons.